question about whether AI is a great thing and gonna increase human flourishing or a horrible thing where robots are gonna come and decimate um, the human population may not exactly be the right question. A better question to consider is My name is Lori Golkind. I'm a professor of social work at the Graduate School of Social Service at Fordham University, located in New York City. I study uh, AI in the human services, AI in social work practice. Um, I've been looking at different technological innovations in, um, in social work and in the human services for over a decade now. When we're talking about artificial intelligence, I think we're really talking about a broad suite of different kinds of technological utilities that do everything from powering self-driving cars and drones in missile defense systems to um, the recommender systems that you might see on Amazon. And then in 2022, OpenAI releases a special tool called ChatGPT and the whole world sort of tunes in to generative AI. And generative AI is optimized and developed with the purpose of generating new content. And the second innovation in that AI is that it's optimized to be a conversational agent, which mimics human conversation. It is iterative, so it remembers the original question that you gave it, and it's really changed the public's perspective about what AI can be and what it can mean for us sort of as humans. In general, there are two different sources of bias in the artificial intelligence world. One is called algorithmic bias, and that's the bias that exists because of the underlying data powering these utilities. And the other source is called cognitive biases, and that's really about the folks who are doing the programming to train these algorithms to do the instructional sets that we want our computers to do. And and so, for example, if you ask generative model to draw a picture of, for instance, a construction worker, time over time, that system will give you a picture of a white male. Conversely, if you ask a generative system to draw you a picture of a kindergarten teacher, often to 100% of the time, it will give you a picture of a female. And generally, um, it will be a white female. So you can imagine why those biases might create problems for people who are using those systems. Systems. So what's the solution for fixing and tweaking and sourcing these biases? I, I think the solutions are across two different pathways. One is at the source, the more people we can have involved and kind of engaged in the AI development process, the more likely there will be a diversity of perspectives and opinions while the tools are being made, right? And so like any other technological innovation or any maybe any innovation, thinking about the unintended consequences from the inception and trying to optimize for equity is a lot more expeditious than trying to mitigate harm after something has been released in the world. And so social workers, along with a lot of other professions and disciplines and stakeholders, including computer science and computer engineers, are sort of turning their attention to participatory design strategies and inclusive design strategies, which social work is kind of really well positioned to engage with because we have an inclusive mindset. And then there's a second pathway around making sure that regular citizens who are non-technical publics understand what the consequences of such systems are. We really do want publics to understand what the consequences of automated decision-making are, including in places like in child welfare, in the correctional system, in criminal justice, and maybe even in your mental health services. So we're kind of attacking these bias problems from two different Different perspectives. The question about whether AI is a great thing and going to increase human flourishing or a horrible thing where robots are going to come and decimate um, the human population may not exactly be the right question. A better question to consider is what kind of meaningful work do we want folks to have lots of access to where an AI is able to support the kinds of things that as a society we want to prioritize. And so having those kinds of conversations 
and the kinds of regulation that might support human and biodiverse flourishing may be a better set of questions than sort of whether AI is a positive or a negative because AI is going to continue to evolve and we are continuing to work across AI development. And so making those conversations inclusive and expansive may leave us um, with better and more satisfying responses in the long run.